This is why you play the game. Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I just got out here on the water and got set up. So I'm gonna knock out a quick intro, just give you the rundown, where I'm at, what I'm doing today, and hopefully we're gonna get to catching some fish here real quickly. I've got bait jumping up all around me out here. There was another splash there. It seems like it's a pretty active morning out here just with nature from what I'm seeing from the bait. I've heard some turkeys gobbling on the way up through here. So oftentimes when you get that much activity going on, it's, set, it's setting you up for a good day for the target species of fish, which today is blue and flathead catfish. Now, where I'm at, I, my last trip, I fished this same spot and I've got an island up here behind me. There's a point that comes off and then over here there's a secondary channel that comes out. So I'm kind of right on that point and downstream from me here there is a deeper hole. It's about 40 feet. Right now I'm positioned uh, with our current water level. It looks like 31 feet here where I'm anchored down at. But what I'm wanting to do is take advantage of fish that have become active and started to feed that are in that hole. They come out of that hole. They're either going to go up here on this island, up on this point here to feed, or they're going to work back in this secondary channel uh, to feed up there. My baits are positioned right there to take advantage of that. And so I've got four rods out here today. All of my baits are suspended just off the bottom. So I've dropped them down, let them hit bottom, and then raised them up just a couple feet. I've got three rods baited with skipjack. I've got one head piece two midsections and then on this rod over here I've got half a bluegill so I'm just kind of kind of mixing it up giving a little variety different cuts different types of baits and uh, man my last trip out it was pretty dang awesome got a monster flathead this section of the river this spot this time of year has produced some big flatheads for me before in the past so hoping to do the same thing today but we got the sun coming up over here behind me it's about i think it's about 6 45 right now so hopefully we're gonna get this day started quickly let's get to it i'm gonna make some casts here i'm seeing these skipjack jump around me right here so I'm just going to make some casts and see if I can't get a hold of one. If I do, man, we're going to put us a live bait on. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I wanted that one. Oh, we got him right there. We got him right there. Come on, please get in here. Please. Get, oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. That's what we want, y'all. I've been sitting here making some casts for these skipjack that's busting around me. We got one here. I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing right here live on a hook. This thing is going down there. I'm going to switch out this rod right here. We're going to put us a live skipjack down here and hopefully, man, we get us a big flathead working through. We're going to have a big live bait waiting down there on it. It's gonna, I'm going to hook him right here, kind of shallow through the back. Get them scales off there if he'll quit wiggling around. Oh, yeah. And there we go. Big live skipjack going down for a big flathead. I don't get these very often. Not, I mean, I get them all the time, obviously, for bait. But as live bait, it is hard to keep them alive in a kayak because this can't have the size of bait tank needed. To support them but when I catch them in an area where I'm fishing it's game on so I'm just gonna let him I've got an eight ounce sinker on there so he's gonna have some freedom of movement I'm hoping he don't get my anchor rope or my other lines but let's let him just sit down there and struggle and see what he conjures up for us and if he doesn't catch us anything that's fine I'll just cut him up and use him for cut bait later See if we can catch us some more. I'm just using my crappie magnets here. Got two of them in a series, one eighth ounce crappie magnet jig heads with a, I'll show you here. If you haven't seen my bait fishing videos, these are white and chartreuse, little split tail plastics there. And that's a, again, one eighth ounce crappie magnet jig head that's a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader i got two of them tied on there 
20 pound test braid main line and this is just my bass fishing tackle here my bait rods and i'm just casting these out and kind of reeling them kind of quickly here up on the surface because these skipjack there was one right there i don't know if you can see it on camera it was jumping out there they're just kind of busting the surface here around me they don't seem to be they don't seem to be in big schools but you see an individual fish kind of sporadically and so i'm just gonna make a few casts here while we wait on the catfish to come along and see if i can get a few more if i get another one i may set up a balloon rig maybe maybe switch out that rod that's got the bluegill on it and set us up a balloon rig and maybe bust a striper out here this section of the river right now you got a chance at everything blues flatheads and big stripers so i ain't opposed to catching a striper today that's for dang sure i'll take them anytime i can i'm just feeling pumped about today man i, I that last trip where i got that big flathead it's like i know it's time i know they're here i come out here today i see all this bait splashing turkeys gobbling it's just it's got me in the spirit man today's a good day to have a good day this front rod up here got to eat that's on that headpiece i'll let him take that bait he's got it let's get him let's pick up on him real down here that's on that skipjack head it's sitting right up there next to that live skipjack that's the one that got eight this is a gonna be a blue cat here to start our day just a small one we got nowhere but up to go from here looks like that's a skunk buster all right well there he is just a old blue cat a small one send him packing come on that bait there is actually still hooked good still looks good so it's going right back down we're going to get another fish on that bait i got plenty of bait today so i'm not going to have to be too conservative with it but that one there is in such good shape we'll go ahead and get another fish on it look at this back rod right here i felt a thump i got weight Pick up on him here. Yeah, he's up there. Oh, he's swimming with it now, too. I felt uh, just bump. Uh, he was slowly taking off with it. I don't know that that's a flathead. No, it's just a small blue. I wasn't sure about that one. Now he's going to take off. I pulled him up quick. He can come straight up on me. Let him play out a little bit there see if he'll blow some bubbles for us they come up really quickly i'm not very deep here you know this is a shallower section of the river or this spot anyway is a shallower area that i fish there comes some bubbles see that right there that's what you want to see and if you bring a fish up too quick oftentimes they won't be able to release those bubbles there comes some more and they'll you know their swim bladder will be full and they won't be able to go back down on you so if you do bring a fish up too quick now he's going to pull now but if you bring them up too quick you can give them a little slack let them go down let them decompress or you can manually burp them which i'd rather just leave them on the hook a little longer especially on these smaller fish like this you know which if he pops off the hook while i'm trying to let him decompress not a big deal if i lose one this size Come on, buddy. He done threw the bait off the hook. If you hadn't been acting like that, Mr. Blue Cat, I might have got that bait back. Well, there we go. Another small. Not what we're looking for today, but no complaints here. Action is action, as I always say. And we're going to take this bait here that I'd pulled off. When I put that live skipjack on and just rehook it and drop it down. 
There we go. A meaty section of skipjack. That live skippy, he's still up there doing his thing, swimming around. And skipjack, you know, you try to put them in a bait tank or, you know, you keep them out of the water too long, they'll die really quickly. But you get them on a hook and get them back down the water and things will just fight and kick and swim around on that hook and just cause all kinds of commotion down there. So hopefully if we get a better quality fish come along, they're going to have a, a big meal down there just struggling and waiting on them. Oh, look back here, man. That bluegill got to eat. Let's reel something in on it, why don't we? This one back here, this is by my anchor rope. Hopefully he didn't get in it back there. He was headed that way, but I think we're, I think we got lucky on this one. Oh, just another like we've been getting, man. It's been a small blue cat day thus far. But it's another bite. I got a few more of them bluegill I'd mentioned there in the video where I got that flathead. I'd got me some live bluegill there on my last ultralight fishing trip and had them in my bucket. And I was, oh goodness, quit that. But I was on my way home and a guy cut me off. I had to lay on the brakes and I sent that bucket flying and all them bluegill ended up, all but one of them ended up dying before I could get home and get them in some more water. My car still stinks like I don't know what with that lake water in there that soaked up all the and all the cushions and everything that's probably the probably the biggest of the dinks that we've got this morning now he gone man all right there's just another piece of bluegill going down drop it down raise it up a couple feet and wait on the next one I'm just full of anticipation this morning. Some people would say I'm full of something else too, but you know, people are always gonna say stuff like that. <laughs> Look at this front rod. Oh, there it goes, man. There it goes. That's on that headpiece. Oh yeah. Hooked up again. It's that same head I've had down there since I got out here this morning. in good shape so I just left it down and well we got another about the same size he's gonna take off here in a second he ain't done there he goes I know he hadn't burned enough energy on the way up oh man I keep getting excited when these rod tips go down I want to catch something a whopper out here today man my expectations are high for time of year this spot and after that last trip out here that flathead he set the standard by gosh <laughs> I'll unhook this one i'm gonna throw him on my board here i'm still in this slot tournament for two more days it's the month of april this tournament runs and i think today's the 29th i got today and tomorrow to score fish for it this one here may help me if he'll lay his fins down these small fish like to flare out their pectoral fins and they do not want to lay down for you sometimes. So it's tough to get a good measurement on them. This one actually is going to help me. I needed one that was at least 30 and three quarters to improve my score. And this one here, he's going to go over 31. So let me grab my camera or my phone here and we'll get some pictures of him turning him in. Guys, that one right there, he'll go 31 and a quarter. So. That is definitely going to improve my score just a little bit. Let's let him go there. I've been in the lead in this tournament start to finish. I had a really good day early on, the first week of the month, and, and got on some cookie cutter size fish all in that kind of 31 to 32 inch range. And our slot for this tournament is... Uh, 32 inches they, they cannot touch the 32 inch line so basically we can score 31 and three quarter inch fish need five of them over the course of the month and whoever gets uh, the closest to that perfect score uh, without going over there wins the money it's a few hundred dollars and uh, so right now I'm in the lead with two days to go in it and that fish right there is going to bump me up just a little bit more so hopefully I can hang on win that extra uh, folding money there I call it and uh, yeah 
So I'm gonna put another headpiece on that bait there. He left it on the hook, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out just because I got a surplus of bait. And we'll sit here and wait on the next fish. All right, there's our next bait going down. Oh, this bluegill over here. Something was on it, I didn't feel him hit it. This felt my kayak kind of tipping a little bit. Well, really men find out. And the wind has got me blown upstream right now. It's supposed to pick up here mid morning and I haven't checked the generation schedule, see when they're gonna turn on some flow. Well, he's wound up now, ain't he? Man, these fish, they ain't fighting until they get up the surface and they want to show out. So hopefully we'll get some current flow and get my scent going downstream here at some point this morning before I leave. We got some weather supposed to move in this afternoon here, uh, late morning to early afternoon, some rain and storms. And I plan on being off the water before then, but I'm hoping some current will pick up before then, get our scent moving and maybe help our calls a little bit. I'm gonna just tire this one out another second here and we'll land him. He's about the same size there as the last and I'll throw him on the board, see if he'll help my score. He may end up being just a smidge shorter than the last one. All right, let's bring him in and put him on the board here. At this point, I need one that's 31 and a quarter or bigger to improve my score. And he's gonna come up short. He's gonna be about 30 inches there on the line. So, fun size fish. He gave me a good time, but not gonna help me for the tournament. I'm one and three quarters inches away from a perfect score, so. Getting down to the nitty gritty now, it takes a certain certain size fish to help me at all. The odds of getting that are pretty slim. It could happen on the, on the next one, but when you need a fish between 31 and a quarter and 31 and three quarters, it gets harder and harder to catch them. Let's put us another piece of bluegill on there. There's just another headpiece of bluegill going down. All right, y'all, I think I'm good here for a little while. The rain is still out in Middle Tennessee, so got some time on that. It's 8.54 right now. I looked at the generation schedule a second ago, and it looks like, uh oh look at that rod. Uh, something hit it, didn't hook up. But I was gonna say, the uh, I looked at the generation schedule a little while ago, and they're kicking on one generator up at the dam at 10 o'clock and then another one at 11 so hopefully if it's rain and storms holds off i'll at least maybe get a little bit of time with some current flow out here this morning you know we'll see i don't know exactly how quickly that rain's going to move in you know you know these weather reports and doppler radars i don't trust them no further than i can see them because it's always wrong but i i plan on staying out here as late as i can today to try to maximize my chances of getting a big fish well this back rod got hit that's on that bluegill got another one on i'm getting some bites this morning quality hasn't really been there yet but there's some fish in this area here this is you know kind of unusual i think all the times i've fished this place this is probably the most I ain't done watch him he's gonna take off here in a second on us like all the others but uh there he goes now he's wanting to fight i was gonna say this is probably the most numbers wise of fish i've ever pulled off this spot this is usually a quality over quantity type area. Even on that last trip out here where I got the big flathead, I think I only caught four fish total, maybe five fish total all morning. And that's how it's typically been on my other trips in the past. You know, you get one or two good fish, maybe a couple smalls, and, and that's the action for the day. So. There's barely skin hooked, wasn't he? Just another small though on that bluegill. Well, throw us another piece of bluegill out, I guess. If they want to eat it, I'll feed it to them. Just gonna take the other section of that bluegill 
I basically cut that other one there, or that fish right there in half. We used the head piece on the last fish. We'll drop that one down. See if we can get another on it. Y'all, this right here might pull me off the water quicker than anything. I'm almost out of sunflower seeds. I got some of these ranch flavored ones at Walmart the other day, and these things are awesome. They ain't paying me to say that, but it's just the damn truth. I'm almost out. I'm going to have to make a pit stop on the way home. Oh, the bluegill got hit. Let's see if I can bring him up this way a little bit. The wind's blowing upstream. I'm going to be on the microphone. It's going to get a lot worse, but right now, not too terribly bad. Another small fish here, though, on the bluegill. This, this right here, though, this is the size I typically get when I use bluegill. Rarely ever get anything of any substance, but, you know, if I got them, I'm going to use them just to give a variety out there. I mean, we got two other rods with cut skipjack. That live skipjack up there, he's still kicking, man. A couple hours in, two and a half hours into this trip, he's still going. See? He's up there. I mean, they just dig and dig and dig up there. If you can get them on the hook quick, they'll make a good live bait for you. All right. Another small blue. Been the theme of the morning thus far, but I ain't giving up till the whistle sounds. I think that right there is my last bluegill in my cooler. He's a smaller one, so I'm just going to put him on the hook hole. Send him down just like that. This rod got thumped right here. There it goes. That's on that skipjack midsection. I finally got a piece of skipjack eat again. Oh my god, he let it go. Why? Scale. Look at that. Dang it. See that scale right there? It cost you a fish quicker than anything, and it just cost me. Dang, man. Here goes the bluegill. I've had a little lull there, y'all. So I got a mouthful of them sunflower seeds. I'd had a break, so I had me a little snack here. It's been, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes between fish. About 10 o'clock right now. It's kind of kind of worked held off for me the other day and that last trip was, was about 10 o'clock now after that I set out here for the last couple hours of the trip had nothing going on that'll be another one I got to put on the board to measure for my tournament another little uh, you call it a big dink or a small fun sizer uh oh y'all look at this right here I'm going to bring this one on in. This fish here, he's been caught before. That's another hook in his mouth. Let's see if we can get that out. Look at right there. I don't know what size hook that is. Probably a 3 aught, 4 aught. He broke that thing off. That was somebody's big fish that got away right there, wasn't it? We helping this fish out by catching him here. We gonna get a hook out of his mouth, make it easier for him to eat. He ate that whole bluegill I had down there. Threw it off the hook too, doggone him. Well, let's put him on the board, see if he'll do anything for our tournament. This is one. Boy, look right there now. He'll go 31 and a quarter too. That's another one that'll help me. Up, up. Well, he ain't gonna help me either. I just got my identifier set up. And he popped off before I get any pictures. Heck with him. That'd have been an extra quarter inch to my score, though. All right. Well, I'm out of bluegill. I think. I'm on. Sorry, I still got a mouthful of seeds. I'm gonna take a look through my cooler, kind of rummage around, make sure I ain't got any more bluegill in there. But I think that was it. I'll probably put another piece of skipjack, uh, probably put a headpiece out just to give us another big bait option on this rod if, I'm, if I am out of bluegill, which I think I am. So, 
Oh boy, here comes another wake border. Could have done without those today. <laughs> yeah, y'all, I didn't have any more bluegill in my cooler, so we're going with a big skipjack head on this rod. Let's send it down there. That skipjack had done so good staying out of my lines this morning, I'll be doggone if he didn't finally make his way into my headpiece over here. He's still alive, oh man. He's still going strong. He's had a rough morning, but he ain't got to eat yet, so his day could be worse. But look what he's done to my line here, man. He has swam circles around that thing. Lordy days. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up just cutting that. That way I don't have to take him out of the water to try to untangle all this. Oh, look right here. Look right here, man. Oh, man, he's a pulling. Oh, man, that's the one I've been waiting on right there, y'all. Never felt him hit. Just felt my kayak tipping over, and that's a good fish, man. Oh, man, that's a good fish. That's on that big headpiece. He's still taking drag, buddy. That's the one I've been waiting on, y'all. That's the one. I've been sitting here probably an hour, just nothing going on. But, you know, I've said it so many times, I'm going to say it again now. You put your baits on good structure long enough, good things are going to happen to you. And it's about to happen to me right here if I can get this fish in. This is going to be a quality fish right here. I have no idea what it is. I'm going to assume it's a flathead because normally when a blue hits, you feel it. You can just feel it, you know, vibrate throughout the whole kayak. This one, I didn't feel a thing until my kayak started to tip over and the rod tip was in the water pulling drag. Man, oh man. Whatever it is, I promise you it's big enough to eat that live skipjack. It's a few feet away, but it chose this piece of cut bait. Man, that's a strong fish. I, I, I have to believe this is a flathead, y'all. I just want to get a look at it. I have waited out here all morning on this fish, man. This is the one I wanted. This spot here, I apologize if there's wind noise on the camera. It's kind of blowing right into the microphone, but this spot here ain't the most convenient for me to get to. It's, it's kind of in between a couple launch sites and both are a long ways off. But it is worth it to spend the extra time to get up here when you can hook a fish like this. Man, oh man, I'm excited about this fish, y'all. Oh man, he's still pulling, buddy. He is a strong fish. my tackle here I use lighter action rods but my line I got 40 pound line 80 pound leaders he ain't going nowhere so I can take my time with him enjoy the fight it's fish like this you know they don't come along often enough for me but I want to enjoy every second with them still ain't got to look at him Oh, this train's going by too. Bad timing on the train. But ain't the wind. It's the train. And that's a good flathead, man. Oh, man, that's a good flathead. Look at that thing. Look at that thing right there, man. Heck yeah. That's what I wanted to get today. Right there. Woo! Oh man, <laughs> I'm so happy. There's two big flatheads off this spot. That last flathead I caught off the spot had a mark on its head. That's a This one's comparable size, but definitely a different fish. I got a hold of him here, y'all. Look at that thing, man. 
Got that skipjack head hanging out of his mouth. Oh, that's an awesome fish, man. Let's land him, what do you say? Yeah. Let's bring him on in now. Let's bring him on in. <laughs> this is what I came here for, man. So happy. I didn't think it's gonna happen today. I thought if I got one, probably around dawn this morning first light but here we are now I'll see what time it is here in a minute it's been a long wait here y'all it's a uh, 11 15 right now man this thing's a beast buddy look at this <laughs> oh man look at that man that's so awesome <laughs> oh man. Woo! Love these big flatheads. I absolutely love it. This spot this time of year has done me so good and it's time again. Christmas and April right here, y'all. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can stick him on the board here. See how long this devil is. Y'all, that fish right there, he's about to slide off my board, but he'll touch 43 inches there. Just over 43 inches, actually. Man, that's a beast, man. My board here, his 10 inches wide, and he's hanging off of it partially there. He's so fat. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Oh man. Let me get him up here. A few more pictures here. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Absolutely love it. That fish there is over 43 inches long. I mean, that's a beast of a flathead, and he's heavy too. All right. Well, I've had him out long enough. Let's let him go. And we're going to battle this thing again someday. Oh, there he is, man. Look at that thing. He's looking at you, looking at me. Just letting him catch his breath here. But, oh, man. I am so pumped up, y'all. You just don't know. Fish like this just make me so happy. This is why you play the game. He's still just sitting there looking at us. He's savoring the moment too. There he goes. Swimming off healthy. <laughs> yes, buddy. Yes. Oh, man. I tell you, man, I did not think that was going to happen today. Come up here hoping for it. Putting the time in for it. But, you know, once we got past... 8 8 30 i was like probably ain't gonna happen today but you just never know you never know when they're gonna turn on and feed and fish like that you all their schedule because i mean that kind of fish right there he can eat whatever and wherever he wants to out here so you just got to be there you got to have your buffet out when he's ready to dine and that's what i had today man had him options out here had multiple cuts of bait had him that light that fish right there could have destroyed that live skipjack which was just a few feet away from that that headpiece but he chose the cut bait and that happened so much for me out here on the tennessee river these flatheads i can have live bait right next to cut bait and they will take the cut bait most of the time almost all of my big flatheads have come on cut bait but my day's made y'all <laughs> All right, guys, this wind is picking up out here. The, I checked the radar a few minutes ago. It's getting pretty close. So I'm going to reel my lines up and make a run for it and try to beat it before it gets here and I get sopping wet. But, man, my trip is made today when I got that big flathead. That thing was just so much fun to catch, man. I am so pumped about that. But you probably can't hear a thing I'm saying because of the dang wind blowing into the camera. That rod right there got hit. There he goes. Oh, he didn't hook up crap man all right well i may end up staying here just a just a little while longer 
see if I get another bite, but I'm probably gonna wrap up the video because that rain's coming and you ain't gonna be able to hear a thing I say anyway because of the wind. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for